Welcome to the first of two lessons presenting an overview of assessing the accuracy of maps generated from remotely sensed data. We're going to talk about who, what, when, and why related to assessing the accuracy of maps. And so a little bit about who. So I am Russ Congleton. I'm a professor of remote sensing and GIS at the University of New Hampshire, and I've been dealing with um, researching accuracy assessment of maps for over 40 years. I've written many, many papers and books, book chapters on it. You can see the three books that um, have come out. In 1999 was the first edition of a book on uh, accuracy assessment, and then 2009, and then recently in 2019, we finally wrote the, the third edition. So. I've had the pleasure of being able to work both in academia, reach, researching these topics, but also I've had a lot of uh, experience with private industry, uh, serving as the chief scientist for an environmental mapping company for a long time, uh, so applying the lessons in real-world applications. I've also been able to consult with many federal and state agencies, including the Forest Service, NOAA, NASA, Bureau of Land Management, a lot of work with USGS, Department of Agriculture, uh, and many, many, many others. So um, what I'm hoping to do here is in these two lessons, give you an overview and share some experience with you. You, let's talk about you. So the goals of these two introductory overview lessons is to give you some basic ideas of remote sensing, uh, especially from an accuracy assessment standpoint. So if you're just a map user or you're just getting into the field of remote sensing, these two lessons should help you out a lot and, and give you some ideas of where to go um, after this, okay? If you're an experienced remote sensing analyst, then you really need to know how to conduct an efficient or an, an effective accuracy assessment um, in, on any product, whether it's a product you've generated yourself or it's a map that you're going to use. And therefore, um, after these two introductory lessons, there's uh, seven more detailed um, lessons that you could view, if you like to, that are part of this America View series um, that will allow you to uh, plan and conduct a fully valid um, accuracy assessment, okay? So bottom line is anyone that uses or creates maps from remotely sensed data should be able to perform a, an effective and valid uh, assessment and that's what these lessons are all about. So what? We did the who, let's get to the what. What is accuracy assessment? Accuracy assessment is some kind of a method for determining the quality of a map from remotely sensed data. And the important thing to understand here is that there are qualitative methods to do that and there are quantitative methods to do that. In the detailed lessons we'll go over the differences between them but for right now, for the introduction, the most important thing to understand is that map accuracy assessment can be really divided into two parts. Positional accuracy assessment, am I in the right place? All about location. And then what we call thematic or attribute accuracy assessment, did I label the map correctly? And the cool thing about this is that there are common components to both positional and thematic accuracy assessment. Okay, and those components include some initial considerations, some things to think about at the beginning, including where all these errors can come from. So what are the sources of error and how can I control those? And then the importance of the classification scheme and that these days that's important for both positional and thematic accuracy. Then the big deal is collecting the reference data. We're going to compare the map, whether it's a location on the map or a, a theme, a layer, on the map and, and uh, we need to compare that to a sample that we collect, which we call the reference data. And so that's the most important and complex component of the both positional and thematic accuracy assessment. And then lastly, we need to compute accuracy measures or some kind of statistics and then do some analysis on them. So here are some flow charts that kind of show that. And if you look, you'll see that um, there are similarities between the flow charts. You'll also probably notice that thematic map accuracy assessment is a little bit more complex, and that's absolutely true. 
but both require uh, uh, looking at and considering the sources of error. Both think about the classification scheme that you're going to do, and then both talk about reference data collection. And when you talk about reference data collection, there are some non-statistical considerations, like where am I going to get that data from? What's the source of it? Um, but then there's more statistical considerations, things like sampling. What's that sample size do I need? What's the sampling scheme that I'm going to use? What about the issues of spatial autocorrelation? And if you compare both of these flowcharts side by side, you see that those are in both of them. Okay. And then if you look further down, you'll see that later on we compute the statistics and in uh, positional accuracy assessment that really comes down to something called RMSE or root mean square error. And in the United States, especially um, the standard that we've used is NSSDA, the National Standard for Spatial Data Accuracy. And we'll talk more about that. If you go over to the thematic map accuracy side, you'll see that what we actually generate is something called an error matrix, which is a contingency table, which allows us to compare what the map says the, the layers are to what the um, reference data says. Okay, and we can do that in a number of different ways. We can do that for single date map. We can do that for a change detection. We can do that um, using fuzzy accuracy assessment, or we can use what we call um, deterministic or traditional um, assessment. Okay, and then we generate descriptive statistics from there, and then we have some basic analysis techniques. So you'll see that uh, thematic accuracy is a little bit more complicated. Um, but there's lots of commonality between them, and that's useful um, as we go through this process. Okay. When, okay, so we've done who, we've done um, what, now a little bit about when, okay? So you as the map user, you need to be um, familiar enough with accuracy assessment to evaluate if the assessment is valid, okay? So maybe you're not actually doing the assessment itself, maybe you've um, got a product that you want to use in some decision-making process in a GIS or some policy decision or something, you need to be at least familiar enough with the uh, accuracy assessment process to be able to judge whether the person who did the validation of the map you're going to use is good, right? That's important. Um, also, as a map user, you should be able to perform an accuracy assessment anytime. So, if that accuracy assessment hasn't been done on that map layer, you should be uh, able to do it yourself. Okay, so that's important if you're the map user. Uh, from a remote sensing or a geospatial analyst standpoint, absolutely you should be able to perform an effective, efficient, and valid accuracy assessment on any map at any time. You should know how to do that and therefore um, you will probably go beyond these two introductory lessons and look at the um, seven um, more detailed lessons that I've uh, produced as part of this America View series as well. Okay, why? The last question, why do we do an accuracy assessment? Well, there's lots and lots of reasons, but basically we need to make sure that the map is adequate for the purpose that you wish to use it. Okay, so again, for positional accuracy, am I in the right place? Or in other words, how far off am I? Is this map registered to the ground sufficiently? Can I use it for the purposes I'm trying to use it for? Or uh, is, is it not satisfactory? And then same thing with thematic accuracy. Again, how often are the labels on my map correct? It says it's water. Is it really water when I go there on the ground? Okay, if it's not, that could be a really big problem. If you, um, you know, are building a highway and you don't know that there's water there, that could be a problem. Uh, certainly added cost, okay? And then what kind of labels are, labeling errors are there, okay? Is it a simple, well, it said it was um, deciduous forest, but it's really a mixed forest? Well, that's not a big deal, right? But if it said it's a forest, then it's actually uh, a Walmart. <laughs> that might be a bigger problem, okay? So what kind of labeling errors am I going to have, okay? So, when you do an accuracy assessment, a thematic accuracy assessment, you usually want to know the answer 
to these five questions, or you really want to know, um, you know, the issues related to this, why the, you do the assessment. Okay. So one, you might need to know how well you're doing. Uh, that makes total sense, right? Just plain old curiosity. Okay. Second, you might want to compare your method against another method. So you've come up with a new algorithm, a new technique for um, generating this classification. You use some kind of digital imagery and you've invented a new algorithm that's so much better than neural networks or so much better than and a uh, random forest or, or whatever old algorithm, you maximum likelihood, whatever, okay? You have a new algorithm. You wanna test whether your new method is better, okay? That makes sense, okay? You wanna definitely understand the map errors so that you can correct them, okay? If you're making big mistakes like I just talked about where you know, you're calling something that was water, um, a Walmart or vice versa, you know, those are big problems and you want to make sure if you're making some kind of systematic issue in here that you can correct that. Probably the most important reason is, is number four here, and that is that you want to use the information in a decision making process, right? So you have a GIS, you have some kind of decision support system, um, you're going to make decisions based on this information and therefore you want to know how good it is. You don't want to make your decision based on a bunch of garbage because as we know, garbage in equals garbage out and that's a problem. Okay. And then lastly, number five, uh, very often these days the contract requires it. So if you're producing your map for somebody else, not just for yourself, but you're doing it for somebody else, you're being paid to do it. Often there's a contract that states um, what your accuracy standards have to be both positionally and thematically, okay? And so that's important. So here's a, a little example. This is a project that was done in the city of Scottsdale, Arizona. It was published in Photogrammetric Engineering way back in 2003, but it's a cute little example and it works really well. Um, they were interested in um, looking at water usage in the city and so they wanted to know about runoff and they had all kinds of storm water management plans and things um, that they wanted. And you'll see that all the five reasons for doing an accuracy assessment are documented here, um, even though um, it only listed as, as four, okay? Because number one combines both of them. First, you wanna know how well you're doing. So from a standpoint of producing this map, we wanted to know how well we were doing, but the contract um, with the city of Scottsdale required 85% uh, accuracy, and so we had to know how well we were doing. So that's number one and number five from the previous slide combined. Uh, we wanted to compare methods with each other. We actually used three different technologies, three different methodologies here um, in this project. We used a combined supervised, unsupervised approach. We used um, some modeling to try to correct some of the systematic errors that we found and we actually did some object-based classifications um, with this using a segmentation process. Okay, so we wanted to see which one gave us the best results. We also wanted to understand the map errors so that they could be corrected. There was some confusion in this project. We confused water with black pavement occasionally, and sometimes bare ground was com confused with roof, and that's where we started doing some of this modeling um, because we were aware of those errors, we used this contextual modeling, which allowed us to reduce um, some of that confusion. And then again, most importantly, um, the city of Scottsdale wanted this information because they were going to use it in a decision-making process. Um, they were going to use it for stormwater management. They were going to use it for taxation, and they were going to use it for um, land use management. Okay, so all those things were important to them. And so you can see why you might want to do a thematic accuracy assessment, okay? So the goal of doing any assessment is to balance the statistical validity of the assessment with the practical application. If the whole process gets so complicated and so convoluted from a statistical stand sense that you couldn't possibly do it or that it cost 80% of the budget or something like that, then it's not possible, okay? So there has to be um, reasonableness here. There has to be um, achievable 
goals here. And the achievable goal is to balance that statistically, statistical validity. You want it to be statistically sound, but it has to be achievable. It has to be practical. Okay. So if it's not going to be valid, then maybe you don't want to do it, right? Okay. Put your effort into making the best map you can if you can't afford to do a valid assessment. If you can't afford to do it right, then why do it? Okay. So that's important. So the last uh, comment here that is really useful is that you have to document your process. There's not one single way to do this. And therefore, you have to explain to people how you've done it um, so that they can then judge your balancing of your statistical validity and your practical application. OK, so that's lesson one. So from a summary standpoint, what did we do? We made sure we understood who. I told you a little bit about myself. And then we uh, learned a little bit about you, whether you're a map user or whether you're a remote sensing geospatial analyst. And then what's map accuracy assessment? We talked about positional and thematic accuracy. We talked a little bit about when you need to do it. And then lastly, why um, you do it. Okay. And so that's the lesson for um, lesson number one. We will move on and get to lesson number two shortly.